Okay, in this lesson I want to discuss the concept of randomness and how biologists use that term in their understanding of the evolutionary process. We've seen from public opinion polls that many people reject the idea that humans and other species evolved by natural selection. Many Christian fundamentalists, for example, believe that God created each species uh, at some time in the past, and they haven't changed much since then. Another uh, group of people believe that, well, maybe there were some natural events happening over the Earth's history, but that God intervened in certain ways, somehow directing the course of evolution, like to, to make intelligent humans evolve from ancestors. At issue for many people is this notion of randomness. For a lot of people, uh, the idea that's, that that the evolution of species has any kind of random element is disturbing. So this diagram will help us get a feel for what's at stake when biologists use the word random. Okay, so if you take a look at what's in this diagram, we've got apparently two populations of insects, this population and this population. And then evidently these lines indicate that that these populations are somehow moving towards this resulting state here. And here we have our very thin stick insect. So what this diagram is going to allow us to do is to compare and contrast two views of how the ancestors of this stick insect might have evolved into today's stick insects. Now up here there should really be more than one individual here, but I just have one here. But you can imagine a populations of well camouflaged stick insects. Now let's first start with the biologist's view. Following Darwin, uh, Darwin argued that the ancestors of stick insects were not stick-like. They had a variety of body shapes. So this would be the ancestral population, and it is drawn in a special way. Here, the individual in the middle here, we're going to call this individual um, the average individual in terms of body shape. Now this individual then, um, we're going to draw a line through that individual and indicate that all individuals in that generation that are thinner than average are closer to the future population of stick insects. Individuals that are fatter than average are farther away from the from today's stick insects. And you'll notice the word down here, individuals that are thinner than average, those variations are helpful in an environment filled with sticks and predators. Individuals that are fatter than average, those variations are harmful in an environment with sticks and predators. So we have studied that natural selection, the process that Darwin argued accounted for the evolution of stick-like bodies, Natural selection is going to operate in the following way. The predators in the environment are going to preferentially eat the most easily seen insects, leaving the thinner than average ones to have more babies. And if the trait, if body shape is heritable, then those survivors with their useful traits are going to pass on that body shape to their next generation, some of which will be even thinner. And those individuals, each generation, the thinnest individuals, will have more babies. And that's going to then pull the population over generations towards today's population of well-camouflaged, thin-bodied stick insects. Notice we're using that, um, that metaphor of natural selection pulling this population. Now, there's another view, and the, the alternate view would be maybe a view uh, that uh, some religious people might want to embrace because it's going to preserve a role for an intelligent mind like God. In this view, here's our ancestral population, and here is our ancestor uh, insect. But notice that when it has offspring, all of the offspring are thinner than the parent. There are no chubbier ones farther away from that line that we've drawn uh, through the um, ancestor. 
And so in this view, all of the offspring being thinner here, we can say that uh, these individuals here are better adapted to their environment than their parent was. Now notice how that differs from the, the Darwin's view. In Darwin's view, there is variation in the population. Some individuals are less fit to the environment than other individuals. And this is the key uh, sense in which biologists use the word random. When biologists use the word random, they are often referring to the fact that the variation in a population is random with respect to what would be the best fit trait. In other words, when th the uh, parent insect here has babies, not all of the babies are better adapted than the parent. Some are worse adapted. And so biologists say that the, the offspring, that uh, the traits show variation and that that variation is random with respect to the value of the trait. It could be better than the parental generation or worse than the parental generation. In contrast over here, what we see is that the offspring are all better adapted to the environment than their parent. Now, how would this happen? Well, in this view, perhaps God is biasing or skewing the results of reproduction. So this is uh, where the religious person might embrace this view to, s to, to preserve a place for God to sort of uh, shape the direction, to steer the direction of evolutionary change. And uh, just to contrast it with uh, this situation over here, we might say that, that this divine influence is pushing the population towards the adaptive trait of thin bodies. Whereas down here, each generation, there is random variation. Natural selection is pulling the population, sort of always favoring one group of the entire group, always favoring those individuals best fit to the environment at the expense of those that are least fit. Natural selection pulls this population towards well-adapted individuals. In this view, it is an intelligent mind that is pushing the population towards that evolutionary state. Now, there are a couple of notes here that we should uh, uh, pay attention to. In this, uh, the religious version of the story, um, we have two notes here, efficient and requires information. This process is efficient because there are not any individuals that are worse adapted than the parent. Down here in this uh, population, the, the note is inefficient and requires no information. This process is inefficient, you might think, because some of these insects are just going to be food for the predators. So they are sort of wasted in terms of the, the evolution of this population towards better adapted individuals. These individuals sort of get wasted, you might say. So it's inefficient. Only, in this case, only better adapted individuals are created. In this scenario, better and worse individuals are created each generation. So that's the efficient or inefficient note. The second note is about information. In the God version of the story, God has to know what the environment is like, that it's filled with sticks, in order to shape the reproduction of this ancestor. In other words, God already has to have the information that there are sticks in the environment so as to know how to bias the reproduction so that, it, that God can kind of tweak the reproductive process to skew the offspring so that they're all thinner than the parent. So in this way, God must have information about the nature of the environment in order to know how to make the ancestor have better adapted offspring. Down here, there is no information required. These uh, parents are simply reproducing and we'll study later why it is that reproduction produces variation. These are changes in genes that produce variation. Uh, but the key point here is, is that uh, this variation in the population is random. There is no information required for this process to work. 
as long as there are predators in the environment and there are sticks that provide good camouflage for the thinnest individuals, then natural selection, the predators, will be uh, missing these individuals more than these. The predators will eat these individuals more often, and that allows these individuals then to become parents and pass on their traits. Notice there's no intel, no information is necessary for this process to happen. No intelligent mind has to know about the, the nature of the environment in order for this process. It's just bugs that are reproducing. And when they reproduce, they produce variation in traits. Some are helpful, some are harmful. The ones that are helpful, those individuals have the advantage. So to wrap this up, in the religious version of the story, God has to have information about the environment in order to help the ancestors only have useful um, traits in the next generation. So when they make babies, they're all better adapted than the parent. Down here, no information is required. In fact, no intelligent mind at all is required for this cause and effect process of natural selection to occur. In summary, then, we can think of, of this evolutionary process in metaphorical terms. And here's the evolutionary metaphor. That adaptation is a destination. Evolution is movement through space and time toward that destination. So adaptations, the, this individual has a, the, an adaptation. Remember, that's a, a heritable trait that helps individuals survive in their environment. We can think of that as sort of a destination and that natural selection is a process that is causing this population to evolve towards this destination. And the destination being better fitness to the environment. The selected trait is the stick-like body. It's good camouflage. And natural selection, then, is the process that causes that movement of a population towards this metaphorical destination. Of course, over here, there's a destination, too. But it's not a natural process. There's a divine influence that is pushing this population towards that destination. So this is the sense in which biologists use the word random, that it's the variation in a population that is randomly produced. Not all the variation is helpful. Much of it is harmful. And there is very good evidence that this is how it works in nature. This story up here, there's no good evidence that when reproduction happens, only better adapted individuals are produced. This would be uh, a, a non-random uh, process of uh, offspring production. Yet, this might be something that would appeal to a religious person who wants to preserve a role for some kind of intelligence in the evolutionary process. So when some people in opinion polls say that they think, well, maybe evolution happened, but God steered it or pushed it in some direction or another, um, this would be one way they might uh, think about that happening. For modern biologists following Darwin, the story involves an element of randomness. Reproduction generates variation, and that variation is random with respect to the value of the traits for any given environment.